Welcome to another video. This week in the shop, it's not woodworking. It's alcohol working. That's what I call it when I drink alcohol. But more importantly, I'm gonna show you how to make one of my favorite drinks, and that's the old fashioned. But not just one way, not just two ways, thrice ways. That's right. I'm gonna show you how to make the classic old fashioned that you're gonna get at any bar you walk into in America. Then I'm gonna show you a fancier, more refined version of the old fashioned. And then I'm gonna show you a little twist on the old fashioned that I made up myself and it is delicious, if I do say so myself. Because I made it up and I can think whatever I want. So follow along, learn how to make these old fashions, make them yourself at home, and don't forget to subscribe. All right, to start things out, we're gonna do the classic old fashioned. Now, like I said, this is the old fashioned that you're gonna get 90% of the time if you walk into any bar, they're gonna make it the exact same way with a few simple ingredients. And those ingredients are gonna be simple syrup, you're gonna need some aromatic bitters, bourbon is usually the whiskey of choice, and then garnished with an orange, marchino cherries, and of course, you're gonna pour it over some ice. So, let's get started. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take a little tumbler. I like to use this little glass one for mixing purposes. You're gonna pop the top off your bourbon and you're gonna pour an ounce and a half of bourbon. At least that's what the recipe says. I always throw in just a smidge extra because I like bourbon. Then you're gonna take your simple syrup and you're gonna put in two tablespoons which is just the small side of any standard jigger. It's about, I think, 42 milliliters of simple syrup. You're gonna pour that in there like that. Then you're gonna take your aromatic orange bitters. You're gonna sprinkle in just a few. Easy does it. And then you're gonna do just a splash of water. Just like that. Then you're gonna take a spoon and stir that all together. All right, once you get all that mixed up in your tumbler, you're gonna set that aside. Then you're gonna take a standard highball glass. You're gonna fill it all the way up to the top with ice. Then we're gonna make our garnish. Now, the classic garnish for an old fashioned is an orange slice and a cherry. So you're just gonna cut off one single wedge of orange like this, slice it right down the middle. Then you're gonna take your cherries. Now, because we're doing the classic old fashioned, I got the cheapest, nastiest marchino cherries that you could get in the grocery store because that is the classic look of the old fashioned. That bright, fake, red, artificial coloring. You're gonna stick it right in the end of the orange and just plop it on the side there. Then you're gonna take your tumbled mixture and just pour it over the ice. And boom, you have yourself a classic old fashioned. Man, so good. Timeless, classic, tastes exactly like an old fashioned should taste, which is what you want. But there are a few things we can tweak in here to make it, in my opinion, taste just that much better. And I'm gonna show you how to do it with old fashioned number two. I thought the camera was gonna cut there. Now, come on guys, switch it. All right, now that we got the classic old fashioned out of the way, I'm gonna show you how to make this exact same drink but just taken to the next level. So we're basically gonna deconstruct this and redo it. It's gonna be exactly the same essentially, same ingredients, just better. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna switch out what kind of alcohol we use. So the first one we use bourbon, which is great. I love bourbon. I used Woodford Reserve for that one. But when I'm doing an old fashioned, I like to go with rye. Rye's a little bit drier. It's got a little bit more fragrance to it. And I think it just pairs better with the sweetness that you get off the old fashioned. So we're gonna switch out our bourbon for rye. That's switch number one. Number two, we're gonna get rid of these store-bought bitters that everybody uses in their cocktails. 
They're not horrible, but do yourself a favor, get online, I'll put a link down in the video description, and find a company that does small batch bitters. These are actually made by Woodford Reserve, the same company that distills the bourbon I used for the first one. The difference with these is it's not just ingredients. They're barrel aged, you're gonna get a lot more flavors and fragrance off of the higher quality bitters. So make the switch on your bitters. Next, to sweeten this one, we're gonna get rid of the simple syrup. Simple syrup is basically just sugar in liquid form. It's a step above corn syrup. It does the job at getting your drink sweet, but you lose a texture that another sweetener could give you. So instead of simple syrup, we're gonna switch out for a muddled sugar cube. I love a sugar cube in an old fashioned because it never gets muddled all the way, so you get some of that grit and granulation floating around in the drink, and it just gives the drink more of a full body. Full body, <laughs> kinda sounds like me. Anyways, then finally we're gonna reconstruct our garnish all together. First, get rid of these nasty bartender marchino cherries. Do you know what these are? They pick the cherries when they're still green, they suck all the flavor and color out of them, and then they float them in big vats of Red 40 and high fructose corn syrup and artificial flavor and who knows what else to get this nasty bright red color. You don't want that. Get online and find a company that makes good cherries. These are Egbert's Premium Cocktail Cherries. They're made from Bing cherries, no artificial colors. The ingredient says cherries, sugar, and syrup. That's it. And I assume the syrup is just a combination of mushed up cherries. If you can't find something like this, go to your grocery store. They usually have canned cherries, which is essentially the same thing. They're real cherries, much better for a garnish. So. This is how it's gonna go. You're gonna take your rye this time and we're gonna put two ounces of rye in there. I like a little bit more liquid. The rye, like I said, is a little drier and so I justify that that means you can add a little more. I don't know where I get that logic, but it makes sense to me. Now some people like to start by putting their sugar cube in there first, putting the bitters on, muddling it, and then adding the rye. I just like to add the rye in there and then drop in my sugar cube. It starts to dissolve that sugar and then I finish it off with a good muddling. Now, you're gonna read online in a few places that you should muddle until the sugar is completely dissolved. But like I said, one of my favorite parts about a handmade old fashioned like this is you still get some of that grit in the cocktail. So I just muddle it to the point where it's good and broken up and some of that sugar is dispensed throughout the drink. Then we're gonna take our small batch bitters because we really wanna be a hipster and we're gonna put three or four drops in there, just like that. Then I like to add a splash of water just to tone down that rye a hair, boom. And then we're gonna stir it all up. Now, there's one more thing that we're gonna switch out in this drink compared to the other one and that is what ice we're gonna use. Now you wouldn't think ice would make that much of a difference. Most people have ice like this coming out of their freezer and if you have to use this, yes, it'll work. The problem with small ice cubes like this is they melt super fast. So if you don't drink your cocktail right away, it's gonna get watered down quickly. If you get on Amazon, I will put a link in the video description. You can get ice molds in various different shapes and sizes and what this is gonna do is it's gonna give you a bigger ice cube, which means it's gonna take longer to melt and your drink is gonna stay less watery that way. Now, because this is a fancier version of the old fashioned, I thought we'd use a fancier glass. So for this, I'm using this cut crystal highball. So we're gonna dump our large ice cube in there and we're gonna take our mixed up old fashioned and we're just gonna pour it over the top. Then for our garnish, instead of cutting a orange wedge, which is very, you know, 1940s, 1920s. We're gonna just cut a nice little chunk of this orange peel. Now, before you just drop this in here, what you're gonna wanna do is bend that orange peel in half like this over the drink and kind of roll it a few times over the top of the glass. This might look like it's not doing anything, but I can already smell that citrus oil coming off of this orange rind, and it is just spraying citrus oil all inside of that glass, which is gonna be great for aroma as well as taste. Then we're gonna take one of our fancy cocktail cherries, drop it right next to it, and there you go. A higher class version of the all-time favorite, Old Fashioned. 
Oh man, subtle differences, but it just tastes so much better. I'd encourage you to experiment. Make one of these first, then make it this way. See if you can taste the difference because you definitely can. All right, I've showed you how to make the classic old fashioned. I've showed you how to make a better improved version of the classic old fashioned. And now, now we're just gonna get crazy because this is a little something I cooked up myself. This is another take on the old fashioned, but it just goes in a weird direction. So we're gonna make a few changes again. First, the alcohol. We're gonna get rid of the rye. We're not gonna use rye. We're not gonna use bourbon. We're gonna use whiskey from a whole nother part of the world, and that is scotch. And not just any scotch, this is Laphroaig Triple Wood, which is known to be an extremely smoky scotch. So I'm calling this a smoky old fashioned. Now the reason this scotch is so peaty is because it's an Isla scotch, which means it's from the Isla region of Scotland. And their scotches are known for their smoky flavor because the way that they dry their barley. They have these huge barley floors that are perforated and they burn peat underneath them and all that peat comes up and it dries out the barley and that smoke actually attaches itself to the barley and that flavor winds up in the scotch. So we're gonna try and keep as much of that smoke in this old fashioned as we can. So switching out our rye for the scotch is our first change. Then. We're gonna get rid of our sugar cubes. As much as I like them, we're gonna do a different form of sweetener this time. Now, don't hate me for this. It's actually delicious. We're gonna go with 100% pure maple syrup. It's the perfect amount of sweetness and that maple zip at the end is just super good with the smokiness. So, we're gonna do that. And then we're gonna change up the way that we present the drink. Instead of doing it in a highball glass, we're gonna do it in this nice little coupe glass and we're gonna forego any ice in the glass whatsoever, which means that to cool it down, instead of doing it in a glass tumbler, we're gonna do it in a shaker. So let's get started. So we're gonna take our scotch and again, we're gonna add two ounces of scotch because I've said it before, we like our whiskey. Pour that in there. And then our maple syrup, we're gonna do two tablespoons of maple syrup. Now, make sure you're using 100% pure maple syrup. Don't go getting butter flavored Miss Buttersworth or whatever other crap there is out there. That's gonna make a nasty old fashioned. Put our maple syrup in there, and then we're gonna use the same bitters that we used last time because they're awesome. Put a few drops of those in there. And then, of course, we're gonna add some ice. And then you shake. All right. And then we pour it in our little coupe glass here. Now you don't want to go all the way to the top. You want to leave about, oh, an eighth of an inch around the rim for our garnish. For garnish, we're going to use a whole orange ring. So try and get it as even as you can, keeping in mind you're only human. So you're going to take your orange ring just like that. Then we're going to take some sugar and we're gonna sprinkle it over the entire top of that orange, just like this. Make sure it's nice and coated in sugar. Kinda smooth it out. Now, this wouldn't be a smoky old fashioned if we didn't introduce a little fire. Where there's smoke, there's fire, am I right? So I just get my little butane torch here, light it up good, and we're just gonna caramelize that sugar now you wanna keep moving this around. You don't wanna burn the sugar too bad. You just wanna caramelize it. Now I waited a little long. You wanna do this when the sugar's still dry, just till it starts to get a little golden brown, just like that. Perfect. Then we're gonna very carefully, because this could be hot now, make sure it's cool. We're gonna float this on top of just like that. And then we're gonna take one more cherry, stick it right in the middle. 
All right, now we got a lot going on in this drink. We got the smokiness of the scotch. We got the smokiness of that kind of caramelized sugar on top of the orange. But let's taste it. Man, it is so good, but on a completely different level. You've got the smoke, you got the maple coming through from the maple syrup. It's like you kind of get a hint of an old fashioned or maybe an old fashioned that you knew once at a party but forgot their name, but it's not quite an old fashioned. So good. All right, there you have it. An old fashioned, three different ways. We got our classic, we got our fancy, and then we just have this crazy smoky old fashioned, which is delicious. Definitely give that one a try. Hopefully you've learned something in this video. If you like these drink videos and you wanna see more of them, make sure to let me know in the comment section down below and I'll keep doing them. But the best way you could show me that you like it is by hitting that subscribe button right down there somewhere. Also, any of the bartending stuff you saw me use in this video, I will include a link in the video description so you can pick up the ice forms and the bitters and the cherries and all that stuff. So, I'm gonna drink each one of these and then I'm gonna go run around the house. Naked. Oh. <laughs> Paraffin. <laughs> That's what you need.